Hello everyone, I'm doing another video um, on uh, showing you guys okay, how to possibly start to do a, a landscape painting. So this book is, I uh, uh, bought this from China, basically it just describes um, uh, how to approach uh, landscape painting in ch traditional Chinese uh, painting style. So I'm going to attempt into doing this particular painting. So in my previous videos I've done how to do rocks. So pretty much once we know how to do rocks, uh, this painting here is mainly rock based sort of um, painting. So it should be quite simple, okay? Very nice sort of um, negative space, okay? And then just on the side, that's where all the um, painting that we're going to be doing, okay? So here it sort of goes through a step by step sort of uh, thing. So I'll probably try to develop this into a video now so you guys could actually see the process of it. Alrighty, so uh, basically what we want is for a brush to, qu to be quite dry. Okay. Try to scrape off any excess. So using a rough piece of paper or a paper towel, just check to see if it bleeds. Okay, if it doesn't, that's perfect. So all we're going to be doing first is uh, doing an outline of the painting or outline of the subject that we're going to be painting first. Okay. So we'll do this uh, main one that's going to be in front. We want to have a bit of waterfall. Okay. So uh, we can have it slightly lower, like so. So as you can see, even before I start painting, just try to picture it in, in my mind. Okay. So the waterfall will be around this area here. Okay. So all we're doing is just creating like a facet, okay, of a of this mountain scape, okay. So we don't want to keep it too close to this side, so we want to keep it around here. So it doesn't have to be exactly what you see on the painting, okay, it's just a guide, so you can even, looking at me, you can create your own textures, patterns, whatever you think looks good, okay. So don't try to um, do too low, okay. So my, the bottom of the page is that much. Space. Okay, we'll probably have to come in a little bit so we could have the waterfall coming from from here. So brush is still very dry. on the top of the mountain here. A bit of three-dimensional for this rock. Alright. <clears throat> so at this point, uh, what we can do is try to create the textures. If not, we can go straight to this side, okay, to try to uh, create the other side of the, of the piece. So I want to keep everything close to this side. This area, the white uh, negative space, will give uh, a bit more um, sort of uh, feeling to this painting. Okay. So I want the waterfall to come over here. So. 
So I want to make the waterfall coming from this side and coming down, entering here, okay. So make that connect. So to create the waterfall, make sure it's quite defined, okay. So we have to make sure that all of this needs to be very uh, obvious, that it's clear that it's a sh sharp sort of edge, okay. a few rocks okay. so as my brush is starting to get wet because there's not much ink then I'll have to go back into uh, my ink pad again and then dip it in okay because uh, inside my uh, brush there's actually water in the belly so once the and the tip of the brush is ink so it, if it gets to if the ink starts to dry out the water will start to seep through uh, to the point um, and then it will start to bleed my painting. So that's what was uh, happening, as you can sort of see here. But um, I'll sort of stop that now. Okay. So just random sort of uh, textures. Don't have to follow mine, but just to give you an idea. We'll start to put some textures around the rocks. Okay. So as you can see, I'm having angling my brush, and it's quite dry. So the drier the brush, the better. So it creates this sort of texture. So what I'm trying to do is trying to create uh, a definite facet here and also here too. So this will be more lighter. This is more in the shadows, okay? So usually um, I tend to want to put darker sort of ink where you want to sort of tell the viewer that um, this is also it's, um, uh, it's in the shadows, it's um, underneath uh, a rock, you know, like this is on the top, so this will be on the bottom, so this will go in the shadows like these, okay. So these will be in the shadows as well. I'm trying to follow that 
texture. So as it gets more to the uh, around the edges, you want to create a bit more shadow to sort of push the center of this um, rock thing out a bit more. Okay. And if you have like smaller textures like this, it usually creates a better. Um, smaller textures are just not going to mean like your painting is just bigger. It gives the illusion of uh, a bit of depth, a bit of uh, volume. Okay. And I'll probably leave this one like this for now. <coughs> so going to the side here. Pretty much, uh, this is our main uh, focal view. The rest here, we can you know, do it as quite random. It doesn't have to be too detailed. Just follow the your lines. You know, with the direction. Just get a general feel of it. Okay. Um, a little trick is is that if you want your uh, the viewer's eyes to focus on a particular area try to create a bit more detail or contrast. So here you can see there's a bit of dark darkness, so your eyes tend to want to focus on that area a bit. So like here, I want to uh, get the viewer to look at the waterfall, okay. I'm gonna create a bit more sort of textures coming down from here. So my brush is dry all the time, okay, it's not wet at all. And make sure your touch is light too, okay. Tr don't try to push the ink out, just let your brush naturally do what it's supposed to do. So as it gets to these areas here, you have to be gentle or else the paper will rip, okay. A little bit, uh, my brush dipping into the water a bit, and try to dilute my brush in a way. So I don't want to have too dark, okay, for my upcoming uh, painting, uh, upcoming sort of strokes. So here yeah, I'm trying to get rid of all the excess ink. So it's starting to dilute a bit more. So what I'm going to be doing is the background sort of uh, paintings, so, uh, the mountains I mean. So here. Create some on this side of it. So I don't want it to be coming out too much. So a bit coming out here. So I've got quite a lot of dark ink in the belly of the brush, so I'm aiming it this way. The tip of the brush has probably less less ink. Sort of see that all I'm doing is being patient, okay? Just waiting for the brush to do what, what it's supposed to do. Don't try to force it to come out. 
and start to see the darker ink from the belly of the brush will start to come out now. So I want to keep this quite white, okay? So I want to push this one out so this is more in, more in the distance, okay? I'm diluting my brush a bit more, okay? So I'll try to get rid of any excess. So as you're getting to something like this, that's good. Okay. Let's test it, okay? It's alright. Distance more. Okay. All right, so it has this sort of uh, view going upwards like this, okay, which is quite good. And okay, now we're going to do the small details on the top where we're going to put uh, some uh, houses and trees. All right, so I'm just going to see roughly where my House is going to be. It's probably going to be on this side of it here. So keep your brush quite dry. So this one doesn't have to be too, too detailed. I'm just giving an idea that uh, someone is actually living on this mountain. So then, so don't worry too much about the perspective here. It is uh, very, very small. You can if you want. So next we're going to try to do a bit of uh, like plantations, a bit of bushes, a bit of trees. Later on we're going to add a bit of colour to actually create a better illusion that these are sort of trees. Side here too. I'll do this tree over here. So you could think about the patterns of uh, the leaves. So usually um, each tree, depending on what tree it is, you can create certain patterns. You can do pine trees. Um, you can do like try like with pine trees. It's just going to be strokes. With this one here, it's, I think it's just um, no, not any particular tree. So make sure your brush brush tip is always pointy, so you can create better detail. Better control of the brush. So when I do like um, smaller details, I tend to hold it like a pencil. If I was to do a normal painting and it's a little bit bigger, then I usually hold it like this. Okay? So personal preference. So this is a bit tedious if you were to do uh, a good job. The roots in the tree, and the branch coming out. So 
don't have to focus too much on each twig. All you're doing is just try to create the illusion of a tree here. Okay. Let's sort of see where the house ends. More detail. Okay. Put a bit of a bush around here, a bit of fence. Okay, so I don't want to put too much detail up there, just enough to give them an idea. Okay. Well, there's our house. So we're probably gonna do some tree that's hanging up from the mountain a bit, okay. Okay, it's up to you how you want to, what sort of shape you want the tree. Okay, I'm just going by eye. How far you want to reach out, okay. You can dot and do some triangles. Just make sure that it's not like a circle, you know, you can see that it comes out in a random shape. Some branches. be branches where there's not much leaves on it, okay? Coming down a bit. Okay. okay, we'll do a bit of uh, details on the waterfall now. So the reason why uh, underneath the rock there's this line is because when the water hits this rock, you know, it forms like a, sort of splits the water a bit. So that's what we're trying to create. And make sure it's vertically down, okay? texture on the side to bump out this uh, waterfall uh, a bit so to if your waterfall doesn't seem like it's it looks like a waterfall then try to do this trick okay is to go around each side and texture it detail it okay so like this and then slowly your waterfall will jump out Like so, you can uh, put a few sort of trees. In the background, do a bit on this one a bit. Okay, not too much, just a little bit. It's fine. I'm just going to dilute my brush now. So 
So I'm just making sure that my brush is uh, quite light, okay? So there's not too much ink in it. So we're gonna texture this slightly. Sorry, that was my chair. Standing up now. So get, giving this uh, piece a bit more three-dimensional feel. Okay, so this is just light, um, light ink, or okay, a light bit of uh, grayish sort of color, and just add in a bit more shading to areas which are a bit dark. Okay, leave the ones which are jumping out a bit. Okay. So don't uh, go and refill your brush when it's dry, okay, just let it naturally come out. So the thing about uh, landscape painting is learning to refrain from going and refill your brush with ink or water when you don't feel like there's enough. So the more gentle your strokes are, you actually um, will save the ink and all water in your in the brush. Okay? It's only when you press it slightly that's when it comes out. On this side. So here I add a little bit more water. Not too much. So I'll try to put more shading on this edge so it's rounding off okay, and then bump this uh, waterfall up Just making my brush as uh, diluted as possible now. Trying to create the illusion of a bit of cloud happening, okay? Here. 
So in the future I'll uh, show everyone how to do sort of crowds. I'm not very good at them at this point of time, but uh, still learning a lot. So you can even put a bit of uh, texture on the waterfall. So pretty much uh, that is our main outline for our landscape. And now, next I'll uh, add a bit of color. Okay, so basically with my colors is uh, basically a bit of um, blue and yellow together, create green. And later on I'll be uh, creating a bit of um, so yellow and a bit of red to create a bit of uh, brownish orange sort of color. Okay, so pretty much these two colors are the ones that you sort of need. Um, as you're going to be doing the house, okay, we can try to make it a different color to stand out. Okay. So I'll first uh, try to use a bit of um, green. Okay. So green usually that's where we say the sun is, um, you know, shines to the areas which are uh, places which comes out in in the shadows or comes out of the shadows where trees and plants. Um, will come out. So where there's uh, light, there's usually plants. So I'm going to create a bit of coloring on the top. Okay. So this is actually quite wet. So all I'm doing is just dabbing gently on the areas. Okay. Where there's green, like leaves, right here, and they're not really vibrant greens. Okay, they're quite uh, light in color. Right here. So where there's a bit of uh, whiteness, you can add a bit of light color of the green. So notice that uh, this painting is actually dry now, so I'm actually going over it with water. If it's not dry, don't do this, okay? So that's a very important tip to keep in mind. So one's in the foreground, um, I'm just going to dip my brush into water and see if it could create that lightness that looks like it's in the background. Okay, so for the rest, okay, I'm going to add a bit of uh, brown, okay, brown orange-ish, okay. I could dilute this a bit, I don't want it to be too, um, too strong in color.
just mixing a bit of yellow as I go. Sometimes you may not even want to use color, you can just leave it as black and white. It may look as prettier that way too. To make the house sort of stand out a bit, so maybe just mix the uh, red and yellow to together to create that orange, orange look. Probably do a bit of uh, waterfall here, a bit of uh, possibly blue. much here that's um, how you approach uh, this Chinese traditional way of uh, painting okay so this is a landscape and it's going to give a bigger view okay so you can do writing on the side even on top so lots of space stamping at the bottom alrighty and that's it